dear students i hope you all will be fine i'm here mohammed jamal khan lecturer in botany university of education lahore today we have a lecture number 10 in this lecture we will study about one of the core subject of botany that is plant systematic anatomy and development and the course code of this subject is BOTN 1112 in this lecture we will study another family of plants that is fabaceae so here we have the content of this family in this we discuss the introduction then we have the distribution of this family after that we have the taxonomical studies and the morphological and floral characteristics of this family then we reveal the floral formula and diagram of this family in the end we discuss the economic importance of this family so the fabaceae that is also called as leguminaceae family due to their belongings with uh, different plants we can also say that this family is uh, referred as legume family or pea family or bean family and it is the large third largest family of angiosperms this family is very important in terms of agricultural and economic importance because legumes includes a large number of domesticated species harvested as crop for human and animal consumption uh, as well as for different products such as oils fiber fuel fertilizers timber and in addition to this this family includes several species studies at genetic and genomic model system for example python sativum or p so the name of this uh, family is derived from a latin word that is faba its simple meaning is that bean and uh, the alternate name of this family uh, as i already told you is leguminaceae that is still uh, valid under the vienna convention so refer to the typical typical of these plants which are legumes as far as concerned with the distribution of this family that is ranging in size from some of the smallest plant of deserts and arctic region to the tallest of rain forest trees so the legumes are a conspicuous and often dominant component of most of the vegetation types distributed throughout the temperate and tropical region of the world so legumes are particularly diverse in tropical forest and temperate shrublands with a seasonably dry or arid climate so this preference for semi arid to arid habitats is related to a specific uh, phenomena that is nitrogen demanding metabolism so while 
Many species of this family have the ability to colonize barren and marginal lands because of their capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen via symbiotic association with root nidulating bacteria. So due to this, this family possesses 400 genera and 10,000 species. According to the scientist, it is the second largest family of dicotyledon. So this family is further divided into subfamilies, into three uh, subfamilies. One is Faboidae, the other one is Castelponidae, and the last one is Mamosoidaceae. This family vary in habit from annual and perennial herbs to shrubs, trees, vines, and even a few aquatics. Now, as concerned with the stem, the family possess a herbaceous or woody, erect, or climber stem. In some plants, the branches are modified into a specific structure that is called as tendrils. The leaf of this family is characterized as simple to compound, having petiole, so they are called as petiolate. In compound, they may be pinnate and rarely palmate, and in some cases, the leaf are bipinnate. In addition to this, the leaf of this family also possesses a specific structure that is called stipule. So the leaf bearing stipule is called as stipulate and stipules may be, may be modified into different forms like leaves, thrones and leaf possess a network of vein that is parallel venation. So all the vein present in the leaf are parallel. So here we have the leaves that possesses a specific uh, petiole, this one, this one, and the arrangement of uh, the leaves are alternate, one leaf is present here, the other one is here, similarly this pattern follow above these branches here, and then we have the hair, so here we have the alternate arrangement of uh, leaves. Uh, in addition to this, it the leaf uh, in which lamina is divided into number of separate uh, leaf-like parts or leaflets, we call such type of leaf a compound leaf. So, Leaflets arise from one point or they born on a common stalk that is called as rachis. This one is a rachis. This all is rachis. This indicates a rachis. So the compound leaves may be pinnate compound leaf or palmate compound leaf. So, in case of pinnate, the compound leaf in which leaflets arise from the sides of the rachis is called pinnate compound. And at terminal point, if it possesses two leaves, then we call it as bipinnate. As concerned with the palmate, the compound leaf in which leaflets arise from one point at the tip of petiole, so it is called as 
palmet compound leaf. And in some cases, the leaves are modified into a specific structure that is tendrils. For example, the whole leaf is modified into tendril in pea plant. Sometimes the leaf bases of uh, the family member of this possess a specific uh, structure that is the pair of outgrowth developed at the base of the petiole of the leaf that is called as stipule so here we have this one is a stipule and here we have a modified leaf that is called as tendril in some cases the plants of this family possess a swollen part at the base of petiole this swollen part is referred as pelvinus so it is the characteristics of this fabaceae family that it also exhibit pelvinus so the root of this family is fibrous in nature so actually these fibrous root are the type of tap root that directly originate from the stem in addition to this many species have the ability to colonize barren and marginal lands because of their capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen via symbiotic association with root nodulating bacteria. So this is just one of several ways in which legumes obtain high level of nitrogen to meet demands of their metabolism. So root possesses nitrogen fixing bacteria that fix nitrogen for the plants of this family so here in this slide we have a root nodules and these root nodules possesses nitrogen fixing bacteria that play role for nitrogen fixation for the plants of this family one interesting thing about the member of this family is a plant that is mimosa that is also called as sensitive plant and in our local sense we call it as chui mui as you know this plant is very sensitive to touch so its leaf movement is associated associated with response to touch or heat and this plant is also the member of this family now we discuss the inflorescence of this family the inflorescence has a main axis develops lateral flowers and continue to grow indefinitely up to last flower and such type of inflorescence we call it as a racine inflorescence and in some cases the main axis is elongated and bears sessile later flower that is called as spikes so 
the member of this family also possess any fluorescence in the form of spike. Now we discuss the flower of this family. The flower are bracteates. It means these are the special leaf that is present in the axil of flower from where flower originate. It presses a special leaf that is referred as bracts. So if the flower possess bract then we call it as flower are bracteates. In addition to this one or two leaves present on the stalk of flower those leaves are called as bracteoles so the flower possessing bracteoles are called as bracteolate if flower have the pedicel then we call flower as a pedicelate and both calyx and corolla are present so this form of flower in which both calyx and corolla are present we call it as complete flower in uh, this family male and female flower are different so we call it as bisexual or if the staminate or the pistillate flowers occur on the different plant In addition to this, the symmetry of the flower is zygomorphic. It means we cannot cut the flower into two equal halves by any one plane. The ovary is superior. So it may be the case of hypogynous or perigynous. As early we just showed you the position of ovary in both stage, hypogynous and perigynous. So ovary is superior in the flower of this family. So here we have the diagrams to uh, elaborate uh, the inflorescence of uh, this family. Here we have our racemes. It means the fluorescence in which main axis is elongated. This main axis is elongated and bears lateral this one and this one flowers. So such type of inflorescence is called as racine and in addition to this we have the spikes in this the main axis is elongated this one main axis is elongated and it bears sessile flower it means flower doesn't exhibit any type of pedicel it directly join the main axis without any pedicel. So such type of inflorescence we call it as spike. So the number of sepals in this family as we concern with the kylax is five and all sepals are united to form a tubular globules or bilabiate structures. The sepals and petals merely touch each other at their edges. So such type of estivation or the arrangement of sepal and petal is referred as volvet and in some cases the margins of sepals and petals overlap each other. So this estuation is referred 
as imbricate and sepal is mostly present at anterior side now we discuss the second verb of the flower that is referred as corolla in corolla we discuss about petals the number of petals is 5 and petals are free from one and other that is referred as polypetalous basically the corolla in case of this family is papillinaceous it's mean that it possess different type of petals so in this case we have five clawed petals and these petals are not similar to each other and such type of corolla is found in pea plant in this family the corolla consists of three types of petals one is standard and is also called as waxillum so it is the upper posterior petal and it is large in size and conspicuous the next one is keel it is also called as carina these are the two one is here and one is here so these are the two anterior most petals and they fuse to form a port shaped structure and the last one is wing or wings these are the two lateral free petals in the corolla of of this family now we have the third verbal of flower that is androecium in androecium as you know it consists of two parts one is that is collectively called as stamen one is anther the other one is filament so the number of stamens is 10 that usually found in two groups so these two groups actually are comprised of in such a way that nine stamens are united and one is free so in such case we refer it as diadelphus and sometimes stamens show a monoadelphus pattern in this the stamens of the flower have their filaments joined to form a tube like structure so as a result flower with a large center column that bears many anther sacs in addition to this in this family the stamens are free from each other rarely so this is referred as polyandrous anther is majorly two lobed structure that is dioecious 
and the position of filament and anther is such a manner in which the filament is attached to the back of the anther and anther is immovable as you shown in this diagram that shows the diadelphus nature of the stamen in androsium. Now we discuss the fourth uh, world of flower of this family that is gynosium. So the gynosium is majorly monocarpally. It means it consists of a single carpal. Ovary is superior either in the case of uh, hypogynous or perigynous. Later we discuss uh, these both these terms regarding the position of ovary with respect to thalamus. Ovary exhibit a single chamber so we refer it as unilocular. So the family Fabaceae exhibit unilocular ovary. In addition to this the attachment of a vule with ovary is marginal. Later, I'll show you in the figure the marginal placentation. So here, the A indicates the marginal placentation. Uh, placentation. So this one is the marginal placentation. So simply, uh, placenta is formed along the fused margin, along the fused margin of the ovary. So the gynosium is must be a monocarpillary. So in Fabaceae, the ovary is unilocular. So it means it contain only a one chamber. So here, this one, this one is a unilocular, only a one chamber. So the ovary that possesses a single chamber, one chamber that is referred as unilocular. So the gynosium. In this family, based on their position of ovary with respect to thalamus, shows three types of insertion. Here, one we have a perigynous. In this case, the thalamus. First of all, I define thalamus for your uh, understanding. Thalamus basically a swollen part of the flower which bears sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. So in case of this uh, perigynous, thalamus is flattened here. Or a disc-like, so the gynosium is present in the center of the disc but the stamens sepals or petals are attached on the rim of the disc so in some cases the gynosium becomes more or less cup like due to the upward growth of its margin. So the carpal develops on the bottom of cup. In this case the gynosium is superior but all the parts are inferior. The next case we have hypogynous. In this case the thalamus is convex or cunical. So the gynosium develops on the 
top of thalamus. But stamens, petals, and sepals are born on the side of a gynoecium. So gynoecium is superior, but all other parts are inferior. And the last one is epigynous. In this case, the thalamus grows upward and surrounds the ovary. This one is the ovary and it is surrounded by this thalamus. So it fuses with ovary, therefore the sepals, petals and stamens are inserted on the top of the ovary. So this sepals, petals originated this, this, this and this top of the ovary. So, gynoecium is inferior but all other parts are superior. So, the fruit of this Fabaceae family is majorly legume or in some cases the fruit is lament or lamentum. So, when we discuss about legume, it is a fruit formed from a monocarpillary gynoecium or pistil and dehiscence along both uh, dorsal and ventral searches is called legume. Here I give you a clarification regarding the one uh, terminology that is that is searcher, uh, suture. So uh, it is believed that the carpal is modified foliage leaf. So the leaf folded, its two edges is fused and met together. So this line of union is called ventral suture. And the opposite, opposite side is called dorsal suture. And the broad lower portion of the folded leaf forms leaf. And the elongated apex forms the style and the style slightly swells to form stigma. So the placenta develops along the ventral suture on the inner surface of the wall of the ovary. And in this way ovules are attached to the placenta. And the seed of this Fabius family is non endospermic, it means the seeds do not have an endosperm in the mature seed. And the chitolidins are thick and fleshy and function as the sole food storage organ. And immediately the dicots plant have non endospermic seed. So here I have the floral diagram of this family. So let's we start from this. This one, this indicates a mother axis or main axis from where the flower attached. After this, this flower also, also exhibits a leaf-like structures at the base of the pair adicel that is bract. So this is the indication of bract. Then we have the sepals. The number of sepals is five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we have corolla. Here we have the corolla. The number of corolla is also five. Or number of corolla five, uh, five because uh, the corolla exhibit uh, different types of petals. So for your uh, understanding, I'll add here, this one is the standard, this one, this, I here use a different color for your understanding, yes. So this, 
what the heck is this so this is So this is this this one is a standard or vexilla. Then we have a, a two small leaves that is called as key. This indicate the keels. These two are the keels. And then then we have the wings. This these two one are the wings. After that we have the androsium. These are the androsium. These all are the androsiums. So, so these all are the androsiums, and all the androsium are fused together, and they are in two groups: so diadelphus. One is separate, and the nine are grouped together. And then we have the gynosia. This one is gynosia. Now, as far as concerned with the floral formula here, this indicates that we have the bracts. Then uh, this indicates that it is bisexual. Then the number of calyx is five. Then corolla one plus two plus two. Stand, uh, standard then we have uh, or vexillum then we have the keel and in the end we have the wings after that we have androsiums dial in a, a diadal first form one plus nine and then we have the gynosium monocarpillary one and it is over is superior so here we have the economic importance of this family Many trees of this family provide commercially important wood, for example, acacia, albizia, and xylia. And their wood is used for construction, for furniture, or fuel. Number two, gum. Gum is obtained from Acacia nalotica and Acacia senegal. That is used for different purposes in different industries. The member of this family is also used to produce dye. For example, a dye katha is obtained from acacia, katechugal. The most of the members of this family for example, acacia nalotica the leaves of this plant is used as blood purifier so we can also use these plants for medicine in addition to this we have a plant that is glycorrhiza glabra that is used for cough and cold and some plants like Dutoria terneta used against snake bite in addition to this the leaves of cassia aleta are used to cure ringworm and skin diseases the leaves of cassia sina and cassia obovata is used as a drug called Sina and Sina forms a set metera. This oil is applied externally for skin diseases. So most of the important pulses are belong to this family and these pulses are used as food. As you know the pulses are rich in proteins and the common species of pulses that we use in Dolva Delhi life is our grains pea and kidney bean similarly most of the vegetable and fruits for example and their leaves and flower buds for example bohinia variegata are used as vegetable 
vegetable that belongs to this family. The acidic fruit of Tamarentus indica, that is also called as imli, are also edible and it is, as you know, rich in tartic acid. It is also one of the members of this family. Members of this family are also used as ornamental plants. Some common plants are grown for their beautiful flowers. For example, Mimosa pudica and Lethyrus, Lupinus, Clitoria, Butia. The seed of Arachis hypogea, peanut or mungpali are edible. They are also used for extraction of peanut oil. As you know, this is peanut oil is hydrogenated and used as vegetable oil. In the end, a few species of prospis are planted in the arid zone for breaking the wind pressure. And some of the members of this family, like Meticago styva, is one of the best forage crops and cultivated as main fodder crop also in various regions of the world. So here we have the references that we use in the making of this lecture. I hope this lecture is very informative for you. Thank you.